welcome to St. Michael's. Today we are celebrating the night, 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time with Father Greg Brunson with residing along with Deacon Dell. Please stand as we begin our time. Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. Agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. Then those who had started about five o'clock came, each receiving the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last one worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this, the last one the same as you, or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. As we mentioned last week, we're now on the way to Jerusalem, and Jesus is preparing his disciples, giving them the instruction they need, especially after he departs and ascends to heaven. So he has to give, as it were, get them in line, get them to understand what the kingdom of heaven is all about. How does it all operate? Now the context behind this is that just before this, his disciples had discussed with Jesus, we have left everything, everything we've left. What's in it for us? That's basically a kind of a rough translation of what, he's, what they were saying. So on their minds were, you know, I, we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. What's in it for us? And then you have this wonderful little parable now, if it kind of gets underneath your skin, maybe under your collar, and kind of gets you a little upset, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's meant to kind of get you, wake you up and say, ooh, wow, what's going on here? Especially if you identify with the first group that started working. They start at 6 in the morning, work for 12 hours in the hot sun. This is at harvest time, meaning the end of summer before the rains start, so they're working hard all day long, and then comes the, you know, six o'clock at night, that's when everyone is given their wages. That was a practice from the book of Leviticus, and that was a practice in the time of Jesus. Now, they were hired, told, the typical wage for that 12-hour shift was a denarius. That was a coin, that was a silver coin, that was normal for a full day's wage. And they agreed to it when they started out, so that was fine. But it's when Jesus uh, mentions in this parable that the landowner decides to start with those that started at 5 o'clock. Only one hour of work. Well, well not even that. Maybe a little bit less than an hour of work. And he says, start with them, and he tells his foreman, and pay them a denarius. In other words,
was a full day's work. He gives them a denarius. And those that came, you know, at three o'clock, they got a denarius. Those at noon, they got a denarius. Those that came at nine, they got a denarius. And so by the time they get to the ones who started early in the morning, crack of dawn at six o'clock, what did they get? A denarius. And so they're complaining, saying, well, wait a minute. They only worked an hour, and they get the same amount of wages as me, who worked all day long. Now, some of you may be getting a little uncomfortable because you say that does seem a little bit unjust. But the whole point of it is, it wasn't. They agreed to work for a denarius for the day. And the point of the thing was, what if I am over generous with folks? What's it to you? Do you have, kind of using a Jewish term, in fact, it's done in a Greek fashion of a common a Greek term. What if you have an envious eye? Jealous eye. If you have a jealous eye, what is it to you? I am being generous to all of them. Can I not be for the one who owns the property to be generous to anyone? That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's not like the way it is in the world. There's generosity on the part of the landowner, who is God, to be generous with folks who maybe just on a split second come into the kingdom and gain all the benefits of the kingdom. Yeah, the thief on the cross. You mean he was a scoundrel all his life and yet he repents the last minute just before death and he gets all the benefits of the kingdom of heaven? Yep, that's what he gets. The generosity of God is the whole point of this. And for us, let's not have jealous eyes for others who have been graciously given the grace of God in their lives. Easier said than done sometimes. We may hear it about some of our other, well as a priest, about other parishes and what's going on there. You know, do I have a jealous eye? I have to check myself, don't I? I have to say, no. The landowner can do what he wants with his property and with his servants. I should rejoice and say to the Lord, thank you that you are working in my brother priest and he's extending far better. Better said than done. <laughs> but it's something to learn for all of us. And that's what the Lord is wanting to teach us about the kingdom of heaven. It's really very, very much God-centered, not me-centered. It's His kingdom. Everything that He's doing, I get the privilege of being in His vineyard to work with Him. That's what we all have the privilege doing. And let's do it with a cheerful heart, enjoying whatever God has for us, whatever we have or don't have. We give all praise and honor to our God. Let's do that at Eucharist, this table. Let's give praise to our God for everything he gives to us. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is our helper who sustains and sanctifies our life. With confidence in our Father's unfailing love, we ask Him. For families who have lost their homes and businesses in the fire across the West, that they find support and encouragement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that hearts and minds seek the peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the conversion of all those whose lives are dominated by envy, violence, or hatred. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper witness to the goodness of the gospel in families, especially the Sarah Hernandez family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to live with deeper gratitude for the Lord's goodness to us, and to be free from envy, discouragement, and bitterness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, Thank you for the countless proofs of your generosity. May we always praise your name for its goodness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed, are, you, God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs. 
through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you lay the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Alexander our Bishop, Peter, Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Thank you.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the back, in the narthex, are these envelopes for the Seminarian Appeal 2020. Now, this, there's two different things that go on. One is for the seminary itself, and I've talk to some of you, we usually go to a table at, at the convention center, that's for the seminary. This is for the actual seminarians themselves. It costs money to send a seminarian to Mount Angel or to any other place, like for instance they sent me to Rome. Actually, it's cheaper in Rome than it was here, but that's another story. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it costs money nonetheless, to send seminarians out. So they have this appeal every year for this. The nice thing about it is, is you just fill it all out and you don't even need a postage stamp. You can just fill out the check. Uh, you make your check out to, uh, you make it out to the Archdiocese. Yeah, make checks payable to Archdiocese of Portland and Oregon. And you can also do a pledge saying, you know, maybe through the year you would like to give so much every month in order to help our seminarians out. So this is in the back. Please pick it up. Help our seminarians. I'm a product of that gift that people gave. You know, that's, it takes money to do all that kind of stuff. So please avail yourself for this and please help our seminarians out for our archdiocese. Just want to say, we started our CIA. This, it's a program for people who are interested in knowing about the Catholic faith. And we're going to have a special session on Wednesday night. Uh, Dick McDonald is going to give his presentation, kind of like on salvation history type thing. We're opening up to everyone because he does such a fine job. And plan on, I think it's about an hour and a half. So plan on, on, on going there. He does a lot, and it's a real treat. So if you're interested at all, please come to it. It's going to be right downstairs, 7 o'clock, and that's the presentation. Uh, we have a number of folks already in the RCIA. I'm still inviting more. Yeah, it's part of our, our, our thing. Just invite people. You never know. They may be interested in becoming Catholic. So just uh, invite them to come to this important session. There's no obligation. You, know, you can go through the whole program and then in the end say, you know, I just am not ready for becoming a Catholic, but I appreciated going through the course and having it. But at any rate, that's available for everyone to come on Wednesday downstairs. Our programs are starting for sacraments. They're going full board of steam. Uh, I heard the confirmation even included uh, Esther, who was in Mexico. So we're international in our, <laughs> our work of uh, confirmation classes. So it's great to see all that's going on. You know, with, even with all of this, uh, students are learning and growing in their faith. And just a special thanks to everyone as they've been faithful throughout this whole season with everything going on, your faithful support for the church. I know there's many things that are pulling you at this time, but just a word of thanksgiving, uh, especially during this time. Let's be in prayer for the folks. You know, there's, I think Wendy put in a thing about what we can do, and that's the CADA specifically to help those there. So, you know, there's ways we can help our communities out during these uh, very, very, very trying times. Some of our parishioners are still not home yet. We had a mass this morning, or this afternoon, early afternoon for First Communion, and some of them said, uh, they looked on their, their map, they still can't go home. And because of the fire, it, it's still dangerous. I think it's on the other side of Estacada, you know, and where they're just stuck there. So, you know, it's hard. They're going through a lot. So, 
Let's keep on praying. Let's be open to the Spirit's movement if we need to help someone out in need. So, not me blabbering. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God.